friends, in this video session, we will discuss the technology for e-learning and its analysis. Let us present the structure of this program. The structure first we will start with the learning outcome and how to plan an e-learning course and what are the challenges and what to consider for e-learning course development and what are the e-learning teaching environment and what are the interactive tools and how to select the interactive tool for appropriate uh, e-learning course and what is the rubric and how to design rubrics for an e-learning course and course evaluation and then summary. First, I will discuss the learning outcome of this video session. So, after attending this video lesson, you will able to discuss the planning of e-learning course and its challenges, explain e-learning teaching environment, discuss different tools used for developing e-content and interactivity, explain the rubric and its design and discuss the learning course evaluation. And first of all, we will start with how to design a e-learning course. A well designed e-learning course have flexibility interaction. So, what are the flexibility? In the flexibility, we have to consider time and location because this e-learning program will deliver across the country or across the globe. So, we have to first of all consider the time and location. After that, the interaction is very much important because when you are starting the e-learning course or when you are want to deliver a e-learning course, we have to engage the student through interactivity. So, interaction means that we can plan for student to student interaction a student to inter instructional interaction and student to content interaction. After that, we have to engage the student for their learning. Let us see the what are the challenges behind the e-learning course. First, we will discuss while developing or while designing a e-learning course, what are the challenges we have to face. One is time and second one is interactive process. As we discussed, first of all, we have to identify the outcomes and creating assessment. What are the outcomes? In the earlier video session, you will learn about the outcomes and the structuring of the e-learning courses. So, the learning out outcome is as a goal of the e-learning program. So, first of all, you have to define the learning outcome and then online interaction and activity. So, interaction you have to design and activities also you have to design so that the student will engage in the uh, learning uh, throughout the program. After that, adopting the and developing materials. So, e-content is very important for the e-learning program. So, whether you are planning for developing the e-content or otherwise you are planning for adapting the e-learning uh, either through OER material or you are adapting from various resources. So, e-content is very important for e-learning program. And then we have to develop the community of practice. Community of practice in the sense you have to make the students in the group activity and make them involving in the some of the task and get to involve and interact with the peer to peer interaction. So, that is very important that means to engage the learners in the e-learning environment. After that we have to select appropriate online tool to design all these activity that means learning activity, learning um, assessment and then learning learners engagement. For these you have to select appropriate tool so that um, learners as well as teacher will not to will not face any difficulty while the selecting the technology. Then what are the challenges while teaching? So, while teaching you have to keep the student engaged, keep the student on track and managing the workload because you are defining the course within the duration. For one week if you want to give some activity you have to track the student whether the student is doing that particular activity or not. So, 
first engage and then you have to track the student whether they are studying or learning the activity or involving the uh, involving in the activity. After that you have to see the workload. So, whenever you are planning for the weekly schedule you have to see the workload for that particular week. So, these are the teaching um, challenges when, when you are planning for any online course. And let us see, discuss the planning a course. How to plan a e-learning course? First of all you have to see the target audiences to whom you are going to deliver the e-learning course. So, target audience is must because when you are seeing the target audience, the, the level of the target audience whether they are uh, they are uh, completion of they are post graduate or graduation or only the school finishing uh, student. So, according to the target audience level you have to design the e-learning course. So, to whom you are going to address that means whether graduate or undergraduate and what are the course goal and objectives. So, after defining the target audience then you have to define the goal or otherwise objective of the online course. So, if you are define the goal it will lead to the outcome of the program and then you have to set the objective of the online courses. After that the duration of the course you have to define the duration that means whether it is a, a one week program or otherwise fortnight program or otherwise one month 15, 15 weeks or something like that. So, depends upon the duration you have to deliver the course. How to calculate the duration then we if the if it is a distance education program or otherwise if you are offering through any uh, regular colleges you have to see the credit system of the particular uh, program. So, if it is a four credit course then accordingly you have to create design the duration. If it is a two credit program then accordingly you have to design the uh, duration of the program. Let us discuss what is the instructional design. You already come to know that there are di different instructional design and then models and in the various video programs. So, now, just I will define the instructional design because we are discussing the entire the planning development and design of an e-learning program. So, what is instructional design? The instructional design is the systemic process of translating general principles of learning and instruction into a plans for instructional material or and learning. So, these are the instructional design so that you have to customize the learning activity in the into the instructional material. What are the instructional design processes? We have already uh, discussed the various process like uh, various models like ADI model, CP model and so and so forth. So, now very simple I, I will say that the instructional process or analysis, design, development, evaluate and then revise. So, these are the 5 component while we have to see while developing a e-learning course. Let us consider for e-learning course development. What are the things we have to consider? First is learning outcome and then e-content e and online assessment, learning activity, interaction, technology and then evaluation. These are the uh, uh, items you have to see when you are designing a e-learning program. First learning outcome you have to define your goal after that for that goal to achieve that goal you have to provide e content and then for how to assess that whether the student is gone through the uh, e content you have to provide the assessment and then you have to give the activity for their higher order thinking and interaction so that they can interact with their peer and then they can get the feedback from the teacher. And we have to see the technology part because if your teacher and the student are sitting uh, in distance and that we have to provide very simple technology so that the learning will happen uh, thoroughly. After that we have to evaluate each course has to uh, gone through the evaluation so that we can revise the program based on the feedback. And then importance of establishing the outcomes, how to establish the outcome that means how to set the goals. First decide 
what we want our student to know or or be able to do when they finish the courses that means what they achieve from this course after that then look at the activities and tasks that will make the learner meaningful fun and relevant so these are the things we have to see while set up the learning outcome and then we will discuss the learning e learning teaching environment so when you are in the teaching environment we have already discussed the synchronous and asynchronous learning collaborative learning and then scenario based learning and so on so forth in the previous video sections so now i will take only discuss the the synchronous and asynchronous where the learning will take place very frequently so live or synchronous interaction increases the personal interaction and community this is very closeness because the synchronous interactivity take place in the particular real time environment so we will have a defined uh, time so the activity will be very close to the timing and then we can get the spontaneous feedback from the teacher and as well as the learner and the non live otherwise asynchronous in interactivity or asynchronous learner will learning will be happened to post the content lecture or notes in the uh, environment or in the platform or in the learning management system record the information and interaction we can record the information and the interaction suppose if any student cannot participate in the interaction they can come back and see the archived in recorded information and then flexible location and time so all as already we discussed e learning uh, courses help the flex, uh, student at any time any place they can come and learn so flexibility is there and reflection and respond time for student we can provide the reflection uh, time to reflect the activity or reflect the information to the uh, learners or otherwise to the particular topic and then ongoing discussion we can do and participation tracking we can track the participant or student what they are doing and when they have to respond to the uh, activity and then the central content distribution we can keep the content in one places and whenever student want they can interact with the content let us discuss the interaction tools so already we have discussed the interaction tool for synchronous and asynchronous here i will listed the Uh, some of the tools that means we can use the podcast youtube adobe connect email wikis phone twitter blog and group project peer review these are the some of the interaction tool where we can uh, use the tool for interaction with the students let us see the some of the teaching tools so that we can make use of these tools for developing the e content developing the interactivity developing the uh, activity and assessment and the evaluation of e learning program so let us see the various tools we can use the 3d tools for 3d uh, creation audio editing tools blogging uh, games and quizzes and so on so forth these are the some of the tools we have to we are going to use for the teaching learning purpose let us see what are the different tools are there for 3d tools we have uh, allies blender these are the open source so, uh, softwares and also these are the some of the 3d uh, uh, free avail freely available tools we can make use of this software to uh, develop the 3d based uh, content and animation and uh, comic scripts these are the some of the uh, open source and free software where in which we can use this software to develop the animation and comic strips uh, some of the things are listed out here you can go through and then this uh, uh, you can uh, directly uh, go to the uh, go animate and then you can download the software and you can install it in your computer and make use of that uh, for animation and these are the some of the animation tools and tone to and wiki we can create a small animated using the some uh, cartoon character let us see the audio editing tools 
the audacity and uh, audio experts are the very um, user friendly tools where you can record the audio and you can edit the audio uh, easily because you no need to go for the sophisticated studio because if you want to create a small audio program where you can upload it in the platform learning environment platform the student can hear your voice or student can um, learn the in learning material through audio so these are the some of the audio tools and some tools for bookmarking and online collaboration bookmarking is a very good example delicious is a very very much used tool for bookmarking see if any page or any website any any um, a learning environment or any material you are going through you can use this delicious to bookmark that particular page web page and the learning material online learning material and then you can give it to the student link to the that bookmark to the student student directly go to the particular place where you have bookmarked and then they will learn the material or learn the content easily otherwise if you give the link to the website they have they will uh, keep on tracking these or keep on hyperlink to the other places and they could not able to find the information what you are going to tell them so bookmarking is very important tool for the online environment otherwise for the web resources and these are the some of the other uh, bookmark tools and blogging blogging is a personal web blogs because you can maintain the reflection of the students though to reflect the content or to reflect the information the student can use the blogging system the blogger is uh, given by the uh, google and um, uh, Tumblr also one of the blogging software. Teacher can create any blog. The student can come and reflect their their activity in that blog. That activity or reflection can be evaluated later. And uh, these are the some publishing uh, tools: Open Office, PDF Creator, and so on and so forth. These are the some of the uh, quizzes where you can create the quizzes. Hot Potato is a freely available. Um, a tool where in which you can create a quiz different type of filling the blanks multiple choice and so short notes and long notes uh, questions so this uh, hot potato will give you the html format where you can upload into the your website also and you can upload the output into the learning management system for their quiz purpose so hot potato is one of the uh, best uh, tool for uh, creating the quiz and mind map this mind map is used to create your concept map of your online program so when you want to design an online program first of all you have to create a concept map the concept map how to create and what is a concept map everything you have learned from the previous video program so here i i will list various uh, um, tools where you can use these tools for creating the concept map and selection of tools are for the learning management system so once you have created the online uh, content or interactivity or assessment you have to deliver to the student how you will deliver the content and the assessment and the learning manage, managing so you have to use any learning management system to deliver the online program so how to select a learning management system so to best fit of our design and then the advantage and disadvantage of learning management system you have to see these three and cost also some of the learning management system you will find the freely available like um, moodle so you you have to select because the learning management system is uh, institutional based so you have to convince your institution otherwise uh, you can use the institutional learning management system to deliver the online program so here i will list out various uh, learning management system for example as i said moodle is there open class e friend and e college hot chalk and learning force and these are the some of the 
learning management system where you can use the uh, to deliver the learning management uh, e-learning program. And then what how to deliver the content through e-learning course. So, online format you have to first of all create a electronic text and then pre-recorded lectures and live online lectures that are to be recorded because when you are planning for synchronous activity that will be a live and these are the some of the online online content and then materials developed and organization. First when you are developing any material you have to see the length of the material especially audio program and video program and after that you have to chunking and then you have to design uh, confine to the size of the program because if you are planning for the 25 minutes video or otherwise 10 minutes video you have to make the content accordingly and then deliver and then record the lecture through video or uh, audio. And also these are the some of the common format which we can load into the learning management system. For text you can use the PDF doc format or otherwise R RTF. PowerPoint as you know that PPT and PPTX, images you can upload in the LMS using JPEG, GIF and PNG and some of the media, media like video and audio program also we can upload in the LMS and that should be accessible to the student. So, first of all you have to see that whether this is accessible to the student. So, you have to make the student aware that these are the format you, you, you are providing for their learning. So, make sure that before uh, delivering to the, uh, to the student, the student has all these components with their computer. And communication and collaboration, how to build the communication and collaboration among the student. So, there are three different way of communication, one is student and content student and their peer groups and student and in instructor. Accordingly, you have to design the e-learning program. And what are the communication tools? As we have already discussed this asynchronous and this uh, synchronous, I will just run through this because you know about the discussion forum wiki blog and uh, email, we have discussed lot on this um, component and uh, synchronous is a live chart and virtual classes and collaborative online activity. We can use these component for collaborative activity, group discussion, case studies, debates you can create, panel and student motivated um, moderated discussion, student lead support, peer review and non-verbal communication using mail and otherwise chat facility. And you can invite the uh, play role activity, games, demonstration, brainstorming, uh, guest speakers and collaborative writing and presentation. This is very important we, can, we have practiced also the collaborative writing and presentation. We can form the group of uh, group among the student and through some of the tasks to the student and they will collaboratively work it out and then discuss among the peer and then they will present through online environment like a synchronous mode or otherwise they can present in the asynchronous mode for their task. So, group activity can be planned and presented among the peer groups. And let us discuss how to assess and evaluate the e-learning program. So, assessment, there are different type of assessments available, one is e-portfolios, e learn, learning contracts, self-assessment, peer assessment. So, e-portfolio is a platform where in which you can present the entire activity of the student. So, we can allow the other student can evaluate or otherwise instruction instructor can evaluate the e-learning activities. And then self-assessment, self-assessment can be a quiz or otherwise any filling the blanks and something like that. And then peer assessment, you can invite the peer to assess the others activity, other uh, student activity. So, that with the, uh, the student among themselves, they can evaluate them, uh, evaluate the activities. How to evaluate, how the student can uh, see what are the criteria for evaluation. We used to call that is the rubric. So, whenever you want to evaluate, you have to define the rubric. How, what is rubric? Rubric describes how the student will be graded. 
So, you have to define what is the grading, grading options and also rubric helps the instructor match the outcomes with the assessment instruction. Because you have defined the uh, learning outcome before to how you will uh, assess whether the student can achieve the learning outcome. So, we have to design the rubric accordingly, so that the instruction instructor can match the learning outcome and the assessment instructions. So, how to design a rubric? Make sure that the assessment is co congruent with the learning outcome, brainstorming various way of um, student can demonstrate the uh, outcome and list the criteria for what count, uh, what counts the quality work and divide the criteria into distinct uh, categories use the clear concise language do not use negative language and then give the rubric to the student prior to the assessment. This is very important when you have designed the rubric you have to give to the student prior to the assessments and make sure that assessment is concurrent with the outcome and you have to list the criteria for the count as a quality work and also it will as, uh, give the student to instructor to the match with the outcomes. Let us see the example because we you have to define the learning outcome and then you have to create the learning activity and you have to tell the online assessment for the task. These are the sum of the example for the rubrics and then we will discuss the technology consideration for e-learning. You have to use the minimum um, of the technology. So, clearly you have to list the requirement and provide the training to the uh, student because before that you have to train and orient them, anticipate the problems and provide technical support for the student. And we will come to the course evaluation because once you have designed a e-learning course after that you have to evaluate the course so that you can revise the course frequently. So, a course evaluation is an instrument designed to give your feedback on how well you have designed to establish your student to meet the state stated course outcome, create a variable and rich learning environment provided a quality instructor feedback and include relevant and meaningful resources and activity resulted in rich successful learning experiences. Now, I will summarize the uh, video program. A well designed e-learning course have flexibility, interactivity and student engagement and learning. The challenges are identify outcome and create in assessment online interaction and activities and challenges for the teaching is adapting and de developing material and e-content to the online environment, developing the community of practice and e-learning teaching environment or synchronous and asynchronous and interactive tools are blogging, email, messenger, uh, messengers board, online bulletin board, threaded in discussion and etcetera. Various authoring tools are used to develop e-content that is 3D tools, animation, audio editing tools, bookmarking, desktop publishing and then quiz and mind map. And we have discussed the rubric how the student will grade it and helps the instructor to match the learning outcome with the assessment and instru instruments. And then we have discussed the course evaluation in an instrument designed to give you feedback on how well you have established your students to meet the stated course outcome and provided for quality instruction feedback and interaction and flexibly flexi facilitation. So, in this video you will come to know that what are the technologies and the uh, what are the designing plan and then what are the development for an e-learning program. The very importantly after doing all the planning design and delivery you have to do the course evaluation for an e-learning for revising your course based on the feedback. Thank you.